name is Harish and uh, today we are going to go through Apigee's uh, um, Visual Studio uh, Code extension uh, where um, you can create your proxies, you can uh, do all the development on your local machine and uh, then uh, you can create an SDLC lifecycle where after you are done with your development and local testing you can deploy those uh, proxies on Apigee's uh, cloud um, implementation so this will help you to uh, do the development on your local machine and then um, rather than using um, apigee's sas version for the development where you need to uh, use the console and uh, ui for the, uh, creating and adding different policies and different logics so you can do all of that on your local machine so uh, let's get started and uh, so what do you need to do uh, this local development? First of all, um, you need Visual Studio Code, of course, uh, because otherwise uh, where you are going to uh, deploy and implement uh, your proxies or install this extension. And then you have to go ahead and uh, install this cloud code extension, which is provided by Google Code, uh, sorry, Google Cloud. Um, I will share this link uh, in the description of this video and from there you can uh, just click on this install link and then install it in your Visual Studio uh, code. I have already done that so um, it's very simple you just have to click there and it will open your Visual Studio code and it will just uh, create your um, extension here. So what will happen is you will start seeing these uh, uh, tabs uh, next to your um, in your visual studio code and then from there uh, the whole process will start and then what you also need you need to have a uh, docker installed on your local system uh, why because um, um, apigee look visual studio code extension will deploy all uh, your apigee uh, proxies onto a local uh, docker container and uh, for that you need to have a uh, local uh, installation of docker and then you need to install an apg emulator I'll, I'll show you how to do that so uh, for that uh, let's go here and uh, once you have installed this so go on this tab which says cl uh, cloud code apg and from there you will be able to uh, start all your uh, work so the first step uh, in uh, process of creating any uh, apg proxy is to go and create a workspace so think of workspace as your uh, organization which you have in apg so similar to that you create your workspace and in that workspace you are going to create different kind of uh, proxies and policies and uh, different kind of share flows and uh, all the logics which you want to do so let's get started and uh, start create an uh, apigee workspace so let me just zoom it a bit so that it's a little bit easier so okay so um, i'm going to click on this create apigee workspace and then you have to uh, enter a name so uh, remember all the input values will be opened up like this and in next steps also when we will create proxies and uh, different policies or uh, there will be a drop down opened up like this with different options if you uh, need for that so let's uh, create the workspace apg uh, vs code demo workspace and click enter so it's going to create that workspace and it's going to ask you where you want to create it. I'm going to select this and this and select this workspace folder. And then the uh, Visual Studio Code view will change and you will be able to see your workspace here. And then uh, there will be different folders like source, main, API proxies, all this folder structure will be created for you. Uh, currently, obviously, it's empty because we have not created anything. And uh, behind the scenes, you can see that there is a, a Docker starting. Uh, this is happening because I have already installed the extension for uh, my um, cloud emulator. So if you have not, what will happen is uh, you will be able to uh, download and update uh, um, 
emulator here. So give it a second and it will come. Uh, let me latest update later. So you will be able to see this APG runtime 161 or APG runtime 1.5. So uh, if you have not installed the emulator yet, you will see this not installed and you can just simply click on this uh, cloud icon here, set up APG emulator. And if you click it, it will download that Docker container uh, and uh, install it or uh, start it on your local Docker, uh, Docker implementation. And uh, since I have already done that and it's uh, already available, it's not running currently, it's stopped. Uh, so once I do some deployment or deploy proxy, we'll see how to deploy those proxies on this APG uh, runtime Docker installation. So next, what we are going to do, we are going to create an API proxy. So to create an API proxy, make sure you are on this uh, uh, view for APG cloud. If I go to a normal view, you will not be able to see different options which I'm going to select. So make sure you are on a proper view uh, for uh, the extension. And once I click on API proxy, now I am able to see this uh, add button and uh, deploy button. So let's uh, get started with uh, by, by creating a simple proxy here. So click on this plus button and then uh, you have to select what you, you want to do. So what we are going to uh, trying to do is we are going to create a reverse proxy. So in Apigee, uh, it works as a proxy in front of your backend services uh, as a reverse proxy, or you can have a prox uh, proxy in Apigee, which is not uh, connected to any backend and it can work as uh, uh, your uh, API endpoint and uh, it will just do all the logics internally and uh, there is no backend connection. So this time we are going to select a reverse proxy and I click on AP, uh, reverse proxy and then uh, I, I will select whether I want to have authentication, access token based authentication or uh, anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and select API key based authentication uh, so that it's easier uh, to have because what will happen is it will automatically create an API verify key policy on uh, implementation on my proxies request flow. So let's select that and then we are going to enter uh, a backend URL and then for that backend URL, I am going to use a default backend URL, which is mock target dot dot net. So this mock target is provided by APG and uh, you can use it to test or uh, do development on your local machines or uh, maybe anywhere else also. Uh, so you can hit that and it will give you response for uh, various endpoints and we will see how many endpoints are available there. So uh, let's hit enter and then give a name for your uh, um, proxy. So let's say, let's give it hello world local. Why not? Let's say, let's say hello world from local and then you have to give a base path. So let's use the same hello world local and now you can see that there is a api proxy created which is hello world local and inside that a uh, few more folders are starting to show up like policies and proxies and targets and everything so this is the same folder structure uh, which you get if you deploy or create uh, apigee's uh, proxy using cloud uh, console uh, the, from the console of apigee um, so this all is created behind the scenes for you. And then here you can see the policy which I added for the verify API key. So right now it is verifying my API key from a query parameter which is named as API key. And then uh, the names are given. And then you can see uh, the default uh, uh, proxy flow. Uh, in the pre-flow, it has added that verify API key and it's also adding remove query parameter because you do not want to send your uh, API key to your backend and it's always a best practice to remove that uh, parameters or headers which you're getting from uh, your clients and you do not want to send that information to your backend because uh, first of all, it's uh, not meaningful for them and then it also uh, removes the overload of uh, sending uh, bloated information to backend. And then it also has this impose quota uh, policy created uh, just to... Uh, uh, add another policy which is imposing quota based on your very API key 
and then it has added that uh, how many times it can be called 2000 times and then in one month so we can definitely change it later but we are not going to do that so um with this you are done uh, creating an uh, api key uh, sorry a uh, policy so next what we are going to do we are going to uh, test this api uh, proxy uh, on our local terminal and we'll see how to do that so now we are going to um, deploy this API uh, proxy to our local development environment. And to do that, um, in Apigee, all the policies have to be deployed in an environment. So environment, uh, think of environment as a sandbox for your uh, proxies uh, execution. So environments have uh, different uh, configurations like uh, uh, message processors and uh, different uh, data store where all this information is stored and the execution of proxies happen so we what we have to do we have to create an environment for this execution so let's go ahead and create an environment and to create it, an environment you have to go to this environment uh, uh, folder and right now it's empty there is no environment available so what i'm going to do uh, create an environment here so Let's name it dev local and it is going to create environment for us and uh, soon enough you are going to see information here. So right now we have this dev local created and you can see so in an environment in Apigee there are different things which you can do. So you can define target servers, you can define flow hooks, you can de uh, have deployment, uh, uh, different uh, proxy deployments into that. Um, and then um, you can uh, define different uh, debug mask, which uh, the information which you do not want to show in debug console uh, of APG when the execution happens. So now let's go ahead and add our proxy to this environment. So uh, that is our proxy is hello world local. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to deployment.json. And right now my proxies is empty. So in this uh, deployment.json, I'm going to go ahead and add my hello world local. So this is how you add your proxies to a development and uh, sorry, in an environment uh, which you have created. Uh, it could be dev local, it could be QA local, whatever you want to name it. And then you just add the proxies. And similarly, if you have any shared flows created, you can add those shared flows also here. Just keep in mind, um, you have to define and deploy shared flows uh, before you start using those shared flows in your proxies. Um, so uh, keep in mind that that's, how, that's the flow, uh, that's how it should go. Now we have uh, done the definition. So now let's uh, do the deployment of this uh, dev local on our emulator, which is uh, here. So I, what, uh, to do that, what you have to do, go to this dev local and click on this um, earth icon uh, with, with the arrow at top. And uh, you can also see it's showing you a little node that deploy to APG emulator and click on that. Okay, so uh, I need to start my container first. So remember that you have to have this emulator running and uh, once the emulator is running, uh, you will be able to see, uh, you will be able to deploy it. So let's wait for this uh, to run. So now it's waiting for runtime to be ready. And once this is ready, we will go ahead and do the deployment of this dev local on this emulator. Okay, now the emulator is running. So let's go ahead and click on this uh, icon. Now you can see that uh, uh, my proxy is getting deployed on my local con uh, emulator and it says dev local deployed successfully to container. So now let's see how we can test it. So uh, to test your proxy, you can go ahead and see uh, in your emulator where it is running. So um, active deployment and here is the URL uh, you can get. So let's copy this URL and uh, open postman or you can go to uh, you can do curl also so uh, both are okay so i'm going to use postman to do this so 
let's wait for postman to open up let's open a new tab and enter that url which we copied and just to get so it the request is going and uh, we got a response back from our proxy which is good and we got a 401 unauthorized access uh, which is also good because if you remember we had put an api key verification um, for our local uh, proxy and we are not passing any uh, api key so if you remember uh, we had to pass a api key as a parameter but now we do not have an api key how do we get an api key to make this call to our proxy so here it's saying invalid api key so well api key is validated but since uh, we do not have a correct api key uh, we are not able to make uh, a call to our proxy now let's uh, see how we can create an api key and uh, for that if in apigee to get an api key what you have to do you have to first create a product so a product is an uh, is encapsulating your different uh, proxies and it is making those proxies as a bundle and then you uh, you will have different developers in your uh, who are going to access your uh, apis uh, and then they are going to create different uh, api keys they are going to have access uh, to your apis through those products so they are going to subscribe to those product and create um, access to those uh, products using uh, um, api keys and by creating apps which can access those products so uh, let's uh, do it and uh, it will make more sense once we do it so let's get started now to do this what we have to do we have to go to uh, we have to create a test bundle and to create a test bundle go to test and click on this plus button now you we are creating a test bundle so let's name it my local test bundle and inside this test bundle we are going to create different products and uh, so let me make move it down so now i have a test bundle so now test bundle will have different products developers and uh, developer apps created and then from there we will be able to uh, access or give uh, api key generation uh, for our uh, proxies so first of all as it all starts with a product so what we have to do we have to create a product so let's go to product.json and click on plus and add my local product and hit enter and uh, uh, we have to enter a description so my local product and then select the proxies you want uh, to give access in this uh, product so right now we have only one so that's why we are saying one as I said, uh, product is encapsulating all or creating a bundle of your proxies. If you have multiple proxies, you can choose different proxies here and uh, bundle them together as a product uh, uh, all together. So once I click OK, so now you can see the configuration which is created and uh, it is giving uh, access to all the resources. You can control which resource or which path uh, should be accessible, either only get or post or all that thing we will go into more details later on but uh, this time it's only till uh, the default uh, information which we have then it here you can see the proxies and if you have more you can just go ahead and add, add a comma and add more proxies here so now the uh, product part is done so now what we have to do we have to create a developer a developer is an entity who is going to create different apps to access these products so first of all we need a developer so let's uh, add this developer so let's add uh, uh, my local dev developer at test.com and then enter the name username should be my local developer 
uh, you can name it anything. First name is local dev and last name is dummy. So now I have a developer created and it is available for uh, using uh, for this uh, product. Now we have to create an app and to create an app, we have to select a developer who is creating an app. So this is my local developer we just created and we click on that and enter our app name. My, okay, my local hello world app and then uh, display name, you can give it spaces, local, uh, what did I name? Local hello world app and then uh, callback URL, you can just, uh, you don't need to uh, enter it. You only need to enter callback URL if you are using OAuth or something, but right now we are not. So I'm just going to escape it and select which product this app should have access to. So currently I have only one uh, product. So I'm only seeing one, but if I had multiple, I will see multiple products here and then click on okay. And then um, the expiry of API key, uh, right now it's, uh, like you can select uh, never or based on some date or minutes, hours and all those things. So we are going to select never for now. And now we have an uh, developer app created. Now, since we have uh, created uh, our bundle, what we have to do, we have to export this test resource to our em emulator. And once we put it in our emulator, we will be able to get a API key. So let's do that first because uh, our emulator or APG's runtime should have access to these information or developers and uh, uh, products information available, then only we can utilize it. So let's click on this export test resource to APG emulator and click on that. And then it is going to export this information to our local container. And it is successfully exported as uh, to our, um, API uh, uh, emulator. So now let's go to our emulator and then see test data. So now when we go to active test data, we deployed an API product. So if I click on this, my local product is deployed, my developer is available and my developer apps is available. And now in my apps, you will see more information regarding your API keys, developer IDs, which is deployed on your uh, uh, APG's runtime. So here you have app ID, you have consumer key and consumer secret. So let's select this consumer key. So this is your API key, which will have access to that API now. So now let's go back to our postman and then paste that API key here and then make a request. And this time we should be able to call our um, policy or a uh, proxy or API. So now we got a response back from our local development uh, proxy, which is deployed completely on your local development environment. So today we saw how to do development on your local VS code and uh, create API keys, create uh, developers, create products and create proxies and pol different policies. So uh, in this video, we will keep it till this point. And in the next one, we will see how to change different target endpoints. So right now, uh, our uh, call is going to the backend mock target. And we want to, if we want to call something else, like uh, we want to go to some other, we want to have some other XML response or JSON response or something else, we'll see how to do that in the next video. Thank you so much.